In this tutorial, we'll bring together a few ideas around charge distribution and electric fields, all within a conductor. And this will lead us to the understanding and applications of a Faraday's cage. Here's a charge sphere, like a Van de Graaff generator, say. Simply a sphere that's made up of a conductive material, like aluminum or steel. If we put a charge on the sphere, let's say a negative charge for this example, where do the electrons reside? Well, let's think about that. We know that like charges repel each other. So each electron is trying to get as far away from the other electrons as possible. So how does it achieve this? Well, you can probably envision that all of the electrons settle or reach equilibrium once they're all spread out evenly around the outside of the sphere. They would love to get even further apart, but this is as far as they can move within the conductor. So we've reached equilibrium now and the electrons have settled into position. So what do the resulting electric field lines around this conductor look like? Okay, so thinking that electric field lines are always shown as going away from a positively charged area and towards a negatively charged area. So, we'll draw our electric field lines like this. Now, they're perpendicular to the surface of our sphere. And because the charge is spread out evenly around the surface, the electric field lines would be evenly distributed as well. So let's go within the sphere now, and this is pretty fascinating. The field lines within the conducting sphere always add up to zero. Let's take a look. Let's start with a center point P. From P, we can draw the field lines towards the negatively charged surface, or away from them if you choose. So this field line would be towards the left, but this field line bounces it out exactly to the right. And this one going up, and we counter it with this one going down. So for every field line that we draw, another one will counter it in the opposite direction. So we can, through vector addition, conclude that the electric field lines, or charge, must be zero at our point P. Hmm, so does that only work if the point P is right in the middle of the conductor? Well, let's try another case. In this case, we would have stronger field lines from the right because we're closer to that surface, but we would have more field lines coming from the left, as we have more charged surface to the left of our point now. More field lines in that direction, and vertically they would bounce out just as before. Again, the field lines, or charge, is zero at this point P. So what would be a cool application for this physics knowledge? Well, hmm, no matter how much charge is around the outside, the inside of a conductor like this would have those charges or electric field lines bouncing out to be zero, free of charge. The application of this concept is referred to as Faraday's cage or Faraday's shield. A Faraday's cage can be made out of a solid or mesh enclosure, as long as it's distributed quite evenly and is made out of a conducting material. As discussed, a Faraday's cage allows a buildup of charges to be distributed evenly around the surface of the cage, and that way any point within the cage results in the electric field lines cancelling each other out, providing a safer, charge-free environment on the inside. A Faraday's cage also keeps electromagnetic waves, or radio waves, from passing through it, in that fluctuations in charge are bounced out, cancelling the signals and making them much weaker. So within a Faraday's cage, your Wi-Fi wouldn't work very well. But you would be much safer to discuss spy secrets without worrying about unwanted signals going in or out. Hate to see the chicken that lives in this coop. I swear I work. It seems strange to you, but this has been my office for 15 years. It's completely secure. Copper wire mesh keeps the radio signals out. 
I call it the jar. No phone or utility lines coming in. Self-contained, unplugged from the world. Nothing for a wire bug to piggyback in on. So, if you ever have to design a super secure room for some agency or another, well, use your physics knowledge and start with a Faraday's cage. And this is also the reason that your phone doesn't work very well in a metal elevator. Many other versions of Faraday's cages can be found all around us. The metallic mesh around the outside of data wires prevents signals from being interrupted if the wire passes close to other charged objects or signals. In electronic machinery, Faraday's cages surround all of the sensitive equipment. Also, did you ever wonder why there's a metal mesh in the door of your microwave? Well, that's part of the built-in Faraday's cage, which keeps you safe from the microwaves leaving the device and getting into your body. And that's why microwaves always need the door shut while they're running. And here's another application of Faraday's cage. It seems kind of scary, but, well, physics works. Back in the late 1800s, there was a gentleman by the name of Michael Faraday. He had a theory that if you enclosed a man in a metal cage and energized that cage at whatever voltage, the man would still live. The voltage would flow around him. I wear a hot suit. It's 75% uh, Nomex for fire retardant and 25% stainless steel thread. And that metal thread means I have a Faraday cage around me. A half a million volts pass over my body, but I can work without interference from the electricity. As long as the helicopter is isolated from ground, we have the ability to bring ourselves to the same voltage potential as the line. Like a bird on a wire. Our pilots are very smooth. It's like they can read our every thought. It is incredible that a person can effectively wear a Faraday's cage and then work with live wires at a half million volts. It's not a job for everyone, but the science is fascinating. In this tutorial, we started with the concept of charge distribution within a conductor. Understanding that the charge distributes itself on the surface of the conductor leads to the understanding that electric fields would cancel each other out at points within the conductor. And this leads to the application of Faraday's cage, which is used all around us in strategic locations. 